Hello and shalom friends, this is Mayim Corlin Vega from the Aruka Holistic Life Academy. And today I'd like to talk to you about a very common problem that people have, especially in the Western world today because of poor diet and nutrition, kidney stones. Now kidney stones have been described by one woman as the most excruciating pain she had ever felt in her life, worse than childbirth. And it's most common among white males over 30 years old, and also people of any race who live in the southern states, probably because of the eating habits there. Now, first off, there's a very common misconception that vitamin C causes kidney stones, and this is false. In fact, vitamin C increases urine flow which favorably lowers urine pH and prevents calcium from binding with urinary oxalate. We'll talk more about that later. But first, well, let's talk about the five different types of kidney stones, okay? The first one is calcium phosphate stones, and these are common and will dissolve in urine acidified by ascorbic acid vitamin C. Second type is calcium oxalate stones, which are even more common, but they do not dissolve in acid urine. The third kind is magnesium ammonium phosphate, struvite stones, and these are much less common, and they often appear after one has an infection. And they also dissolve in vitamin C acidified urine. Uric acid, uh, now number four, the, the, the fourth type, uric acid stones, they result from a problem metabolizing purines, which is the chemical base of adenine, xanthine, theobromine in, in chocolate, and uric acid. They may form in a condition such as gout. And the fifth type is are cysteine stones. And these result from a hereditary inability to reabsorb cysteine. And most children who have kidney stones are this type. They have this type of um, kidney stone, the cysteine stones. And this is very rare. This type is very rare. So the symptoms of kidney stones include pain on one side of the lower back, in the belly, or down into the groin, nausea and vomiting, chills and fever if the stone causes a blockage and an infection, a frequent urge to urinate, and blood and sediment in the urine. Now, one of the main holistic healers whose work we study at the Ruka Holistic Life Academy is the holistic healer by the name of Russell Blaylock. Now, Russell Blaylock is a medical doctor and a neurosurgeon, but he, despite his medical education, through his own independent learning, he learned about the power of nutrition. And of course, also the the harmful the harmfulness of of conventional drugs, and so he opened up his own nutritional um, nutritional center to help heal people of various con conditions through nutrition. Now, he saw a lot of of patients who had very painful kidney stones very painful cases of kidney stones. And in many of the cases that he saw, even high doses of powerful narcotics could not control the intense pain that they felt. But um, back in 2014, he talked about, um, he talked about one of his family members that had an acute onset of kidney stone pain. And he was in really bad shape. So it was a Sunday and all the regular clinics were closed. So what happened was he, he gave his family member a 1,000 milligram dose of magnesium citrate slash malate in water. And they took him to the emergency room. But by the time that they arrived, all of his pain had subsided. And he was astounded as uh, along with the rest of the emergency room staff they were just floored 
They had never seen kidney stone pain relieved so quickly and completely. And later on, he talks about his how through his re- research um, on kidney stones and magnesium, he learned that magnesium powerfully suppresses the formation of calcium type kidney stones, and that it also acts as a powerful relaxant for muscle spasms within the ureter, which is the cause of the excruciating pain associated with kidney stones. And in fact, magnesium can reduce pain for any condition. And ever since, ever since finding that out, um, his family member has been on magnesium since then, because, you know, I, there's a there's a famous book that, written by I think it was Carolyn Dean about basically about how most of the world almost everyone has a terrible magnesium deficiency and kidney stones is one of the one of the repercussions of that deficiency so after that time he no longer had any problems with kidney stones Interestingly enough, orange juice also reduces kidney stones, and it appears that organic acids in the juice, as well as flavonoids, hesperidin, prohibited the the development of of kidney stones. There has been an increase of incidence of kidney stones over tenfold, but what's most shocking is that the increase in incidences is not among those with the normal risk factors of obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. But instead, the greatest increase has been among men over 60 years of age and women over 60. Now, there there are several reasons for this, but three main um main causes of magnesium deficiency. And remember, magnesium is just one of the key, the keys to unlocking um, kidney stones, magnesium deficiency. And three of the, three of the biggest sources for magnesium deficiency, um, according to Russell Blaylock, is number one, soft drinks. Number two, many prescription medications, and number three, a high sugar diet. Those are the three main ones. Now, these are the kinds of, these are the things that we can somewhat control. Now, there's also, you know, the issue of our soils not having enough magnesium and other minerals, which in turn causes our food supply to not have the proper minerals that we need, which is why magnesium supplementation is so important in the first place. Of course, we should be getting all the magnesium we need from our food, but, you know, we just can't these days. Over 75% of the general population has insufficient magnesium, and people with the most common type of stone, which is a calcium oxalate stone, generally have a low intake of magnesium. So supplementation dramatically reduces the incidence of kidney stones in these high-risk people. Now, obese people, those with hypertension and diabetics, characteristically have low magnesium levels as well. And of course, people that are over 60 and they're drinking more soda and eating lots of carbohydrates and, and taking a lot of magnesium depleting medications, which is very common over age 60, it's just so important that they supplement with magnesium. And of course, the organic acids, as I mentioned earlier, as, as found in fresh orange juice, also reduces the risk of kidney stones. Okay, now I'd like to share with you some information from another one of the holistic health experts that we study at the Uruka Holistic Life Academy in our program. And this is 
orthomolecular nutrition specialist, Dr. Andrew Saul, who is a PhD. He's a scientist and he's also a nutritional consultant. And of course he practices primarily orthomolecular nutrition when it comes to healing. He studied under Nobel, two-time Nobel Prize winner, Linus Pauling, who was basically one of probably the, the biggest pioneer in orthomolecular medicine. And this is from their um, their news release from February 11th, 2013. And it's found in ortho, on the website, orthomolecular.org. Okay, and he talks about magnesium also, the importance of that. And because we've already covered that, I wanted to move on to other things that he goes more in depth into um, than um, Dr. Boylock does, okay? So, but before we do that, um, I just wanted to invite you all, if anyone would like um, a holistic life coaching relationship, um, please contact me for a free initial consultation. And we can talk about um, if you would like to be part of our program, we teach three main things at the Aruka Holistic Life Academy. Number one is the art of holistic health and healing and naturopathic herbalism. Um, number two, we teach about coaching and mindset. And number three, we teach online entrepreneurship and digital marketing. So as a holistic life coach, my job is basically to help you to achieve your life goals. And these are the three things that we specialize in at, at Aruka.com. Holistic health and healing, uh, mindset and coaching, and online entrepreneurship. And online entrepreneurship, sp specifically online, because we believe, you know, I believe that, especially in this day and age, especially with, you know, the whole pandemic that happened, um, really being independent and being able to have that time freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom is just so important to me uh, for my family. And that's why, you know, our, our, our institution, our organization, our school is based on that. Okay. Now on to uh, Dr. Andrew Saul's um, 12 ways to reduce your risk of kidney stones. So um, number one is maximize your fluid intake. Um, a good rule of thumb that, um, that we teach is to drink half of your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, then drink 75 ounces of water that day. Now, it doesn't have to be just plain water. Um, I like to mix it up with um, herbal teas, uh, especially ones that are helpful for for healing, such as, you know, I drink an herbal calcium tea almost daily. Um, and I, I talked a little bit about that earlier. It's just helped with so many different things. And same thing with um, my clients and, and my family and friends. Um, okay, and then... Um, but you don't want to count diuretics in that, like um, like coffee or black tea. Okay, you want to count things that are not uh, diuretics. Okay. Um, another thing is fruit, fruit and vegetable juices can count in that fluid intake, especially if they're fresh. But even if they're not fresh, um, for example, apple juice is a is a drink that um, that my family has often and apple juice really helps me with my um, gallstones it really helps to keep them at bay so that they're not painful and of course you know I try to avoid eating too much um, too much dairy which you know is a trigger for my gallstones um, but yeah and then another thing is orange juice remember that also helps with kidney stones and then uh, various vegetable juices which are just healthy for so many things so these will can all count towards that um, that liquid intake, that daily liquid intake that you should get. So orange juice, grape juice, carrot juice, these are all high in citrates. And these, 
these juices inhibit both a buildup of uric acid and also stop calcium salts from forming, which is great for kidney stones, okay? And the second thing that he teaches is to control your urine pH. Now, slightly acidic urine helps prevent urinary tract infections and dissolves both phosphate and struvite stones and will not cause oxalate stones. And of course, one way to make urine slightly acidic is to take vitamin C. So um, personally, I take uh, at least 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C um, every day and and when I'm when I'm sick, like you know, if I have a cough or a sore throat or um, runny nose or anything like that, I'll I'll take definitely extra, um, at least double that or or even more. Um, number three, we have um, avoid excessive oxalates by not eating very much rhubarb, spinach, chocolate, or dark tea or coffee. Now. <laughs> I like all these things. I love rhubarb, spinach, chocolate, or dark dark tea and coffee. But if, especially if you're having problems, you know, you should really um, just at least tone down on those, you know. And then, you know, if, if you've gone a long time without any kind of pain, then, you know, maybe you can start um, taking these things again. But, you know, the, these can be definitely triggers. So avoiding too much rhubarb, spinach, chocolate, dark tea, and coffee. And now, of course, a lot of these foods, every single food I've mentioned, they have health benefits. So um, I don't think it's necessarily good to avoid them long-term, but maybe just, you know, minimize them. Don't eat too much of them, especially. And if you are going to eat them, you know, make sure that you're doing those other things that, um, that you need. Okay, um, number four, lose weight. Being overweight is associated with sub substantially increased risk of kidney stones, okay? And so, I mean, of course, being overweight is tied to a lot of different issues, not just kidney stones. Number five, um, don't, uh, don't avoid calcium. Calcium is probably not the real culprit. And low calcium may itself cause calcium stones. It may cause kidney stones. So um, as I said earlier, um, I, I have a herbal calcium tea formula that it's, it's not high in calcium itself, but it helps you process the calcium that's already in your body. And that's really the, what the, the issue that most people have. Okay. So, um, mm -hmm. so don't try to specifically avoid calcium, like foods that have calcium or anything like that. Um, number six, <clears throat> excuse me, most kidney stones are compounds of calcium, and yet many Americans are actually calcium deficient. Now, instead of lo lowering your calcium intake, reduce excess dietary phosphorus by avoiding carbonated soft drinks, especially colas. Now, cola soft drinks contain excessive quantities of phosphorus and phosphor phosphoric acid, and this is the same acid that is used by dentists to, to dissolve tooth enamel before applying bonding resins. So remember, uh, Dr. Boylock, he talked about some of the things that that caused kidney stone, kidney stones. One of them were soft drinks. The other one was, um, the other one was uh, pharmaceutical drugs. But soft drinks is a really easy one that, that you should get rid of. Now, I think you should probably get rid of all soft drinks like 90% of the time. Our family drinks soft drinks like maybe once a month, if that. Okay, there's so many other healthier drinks that you could drink besides soft drinks. And we only do it usually when there's like some kind of a you know special occasion or celebration. But you know, for normal everyday use, it's it's really a very bad drink to consume on a regular basis. Okay, number seven, um, it's the same as what Dr. Blaylock said, take a magnesium supplement, okay? Um, and so I won't go into that since we already talked about that. Number eight, take a good B-complex vitamin supplement twice a day. Um, so it should contain pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6. Now, a, a, a deficiency of vitamin B6 produces kidney stones. So vitamin B6 is is 
vitamin B6 deficiency is, is very common in humans. Um, and a vitamin B1 deficiency also is associated with stones. Okay, now for uric acid purine stones associated with gout, you have to stop eating meat. Now nutrition tables and textbooks indicate that, that meats are the major dietary purine source. Remember we talked about how there were five different types of kidney stones and although this type is not the most common, um, you should get tested and make sure you know you know what kind of stones you have. And if it's this, then you have to re greatly reduce your meat intake. Um, definitely don't have it for a while, a very long while, if you've had um, a recent attack. And um, even after that, just reduce, minimize it. Uh, maybe just eat it, you know, one meal per per, per week, um, in, especially instead of, you know, every single day, like a lot of Americans do. Okay. Um, so natural treatment adds juice fasts and eating sour cherries to help with this kind of, um, with these kinds of kidney stones also, the, acid, the uric acid purine stones. And also an increase in vitamin C consumption helps by improving the urinary excretion of uric acid. Now for, so for these kinds of stones, use buffered ascorbate, buffered ascorbate. Now if you have Cysteine stones, which only account for about 1% of all kidney stones, you should follow a low methionine diet and use buffered vitamin C. Now, um, so buffered mean, means it's time released. Liposomal is a, is a good type. Um, foods that have methionine are, again, meat. But there's, there's other foods. Um, for example, foods that are high in methionine include soybeans and soy nuts, um, teff, Brazil nuts. Now, some of these foods, like Brazil nuts, are very healthy for you, but you know they're just not good if you have that type of kidney stone. Um, and of course, all types of meat, beef, chicken, crab, fish, um, you know, ham, lobster, pork, shrimp, turkey, doesn't matter. Um, they're high in methionine. So especially if you have these kinds of cysteine stones, you want to greatly reduce um, foods that have methionine. Uh, another, um, all kidney stones are associated with high sugar intake. Okay, this is point number 11. I'm not sure if I, if I kept count with everything, but this is number 11 now. So Eat less sugar. Um, desserts and, you know, cookies and candy and all that, sugary drinks, anything with high fructose corn syrup, also um, just don't eat it. <laughs> if you're going to have anything sweet, it should be natural, like fresh banana or um, use things like honey or maple syrup or something like that um, instead of uh, sugar and high fructose corn syrup. syrup. And now um, stevia is a really healthy, um, really it's a, it, it's not a sugar at all, um, but it it's, it's has a sweetness to it. Some people don't like the taste, but, um, you know, if you're having pain, um, stevia should be your best friend. You want to definitely stay away from all the fake sugars like aspartame, and you know, it's like sweet and low and equal and stuff like that. Those have huge problems, um, you know, that we'll, we won't go into in this in this episode. But okay, so and lastly, number twelve, <clears throat> infections can cause conditions that favor stone formation, such as um, overly concentrated urine from fever sweating or vomiting or diarrhea. So try to stay healthy, just overall good health. Try to avoid infections and uh, make sure that, you know, if you do get an, an infection, you take extra good care of yourself. Um, in another um, in another episode, uh, I talk about 
I think it's called how much vitamin C should I take or should you take? I forgot what exactly the title was, but you can you can reference that and it. I, I talk there about you know if I if I ever do get any kind of sickness or an infection, you know what what my protocol is, how much vitamin C I take, and vitamin D and other herbs and supplements, um, and so forth. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about a few suggestions from Dr. Josh Axe. Um, now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. He says a lot of things that are the same as what Dr. Blaylock says and um, um, Dr. Andrew Saul. So I'm not going to repeat those things. I'm just going to talk about things that the other two do not mention. For example, Dr. Axe recommends getting regular exercise, and this is good for overall health, but especially weight-bearing exercises like strength training and various uh, body weight exercises, they are good for building bone strength and preventing demineralization of your skeletal system. And uh, on the other hand, being sedentary can cause bones to release more calcium into the blood, which increases the odds of it accumulating into the kidneys. Now, um, you can sneak more exercise into your body by trying exercise hacks like walking at work, sitting on a stability ball, and doing squats. That's a really good one. It's a good, it's a good one for weight bearing. Um, it's just squats are just a really great thing to do. Um, you can do them while you're, you know, while you're watching a YouTube video or you know something like that, or talking to a friend even. You can just be doing squats while you're on the phone. Now. Um, Remember, um, al although you might want to stop taking any calcium supplements when you have um, when you have kidney stones, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid um, calcium-rich foods. And, and calcium-rich foods have, have not been shown to um, have an increase in kidney stone incidence. Okay, so another thing that um, Dr. Josh Axe recommends is castor oil packs and hot compresses. Now, castor oil is a very classic, um, holistic, natural remedy that herbalists and you know naturopaths have been using for for many centuries, actually centuries, at least. So, castor oil has special anti-inflammatory abilities that are useful for relieving pain associated with kidney stone symptoms like cramping or muscle spasms in the ad abdomen. Now you can buy a castor oil pa pack or make your own by soaking a clean towel in pure castor oil and pressing it onto the kidneys, just right onto that area, and allowing it to seep into the skin. Also, for hot compresses, you can press a hot compress over the kidneys several times per day to increase blood flow and relax tense muscles and help stones just pass more easily. You can soak towel in hot vinegar to make this even more effective for dulling pain, such as using a 50-50 mix of apple cider vinegar and water. But in my opinion, the castor oil packs are going to be more effective. Okay, so as many of you know by now, I usually always start with orthomolecular nutrition, which is basically the um, having getting uh, the, your proper adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals first, because it's one of the easiest and most accessible ways to attain holistic health and healing. And even though you know I'm trained as an herbalist. I understand and acknowledge that um, getting vitamins is much easier than than getting herbs. So that's why I started with all the vitamins and recommendations there, and also you know the change of diet and you know different um, eating habits and whatnot. Now let's go into the herbs because you know this part is also very important. It's great for detoxing and um, and cleansing. So I'm going to put all of the notes for this lesson um, on a blog. It'll be at aruka.com slash blog slash 
kidney stones, kidney dash stones, and I'll also put it on um, on the episode notes and on the YouTube description when I upload it there. Um, just wherever it, wherever you find find this lesson, uh, um, if you look at the description, I will add the link to all the notes for this. Okay, so when it comes to the herbs um, that you should take. Remember, this is a holistic approach, so I'm not going to tell you to just take one vitamin here or do this one thing. That wouldn't be holistic. If you want to heal, you have to do everything you can to heal, to truly heal and stop doing the things that made you sick in the first place, right? Okay, so um, let's go now to Dr. Richard Schultz. He is a... Uh, probably the most famous herbalist alive today. And he studied under Dr. John R. Christopher, who I would say probably used to be the greatest herbalist alive until Dr. Schultz, um, his student who I believe surpassed him. Um, but so he has two books um, called Detoxification and there's two volumes to it. Now, certainly both volumes, especially, so the first one lays a good foundation. But I want to direct you, especially right now, to volume two, and it's available for free. And I'll put a link to it on the on the notes. It's available for free, volume two. And he has on page, uh, what page is that again? On page 24, I think it is. Page 24. No, it's chapter 24 page 238 and 239, starting there. Um, he talks about his five-day kidney detox program. Now, um, it's more expensive when you buy the complete program directly from him. It's cheaper if you you know make everything yourself, but most people don't have the time to make their own tinctures and, and you know, mix their own teas. So, um, you know, unless you're already a trained herbalist, I, I would suggest just, just buying his... His package and then he he gives further instructions just you know eight steps to do every single day and part of it is are the things that um, you know I, I talked about already like getting enough um, water or liquids um, but another part of it is just the detoxification part of it um, so I do teach he also teaches in part, as part of his program, he says to um, take superfoods, and I do have a, an affordable, more a more affordable way to uh, make your own superfoods. But again, you know, if you don't know about that already, then I would just, you know, get it from him. It's just quicker and easier. Um, anyways, so the herbs that um, are in his formula for the kidney for example the 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 k-b formula that's it's for the kidneys and bladder these are very traditional herbs to help with your kidney and your bladder okay so there's uva ursi and juniper berry horsetail herb burdock root corn silk and parsley root so these these herbs aren't going to be easily found except for maybe parsley root but most of these herbs you're not going to be able to find at your local grocery store i do have um i'll put in the show notes also um you know first of all dr schultz's website where you can um where he talks about everything and and you know how to purchase his kidney cleansing formula but you know also put the links to the herbal stores where I get my herbs from. So in case you want to make it yourself and save money, you can make your own tea. Okay. So don't worry too much about, um, about the proportions. You know, it's one, this is something that Dr. Schultz himself taught me when I studied under him is not to worry too much about the proportions. Uh, make sure to get, you know, maybe at least the first three or four um, herbs um, that I mentioned. Um, and if you can get the rest, that's great. Um, maybe put more of the first few, um, you know, um, don't, don't sweat that because, you know, herbalism is a, a very, 
it's an it's an ancient art and herbalists would use whatever they had whatever they had on stock you know whatever was growing in the season so you know just just because you don't have one of the ingredients that doesn't mean you you can't take it or you can't you know make it or that it won't work or anything like that okay so that was in his tincture those are the herbs for his tincture for his for his um, tea formula and always prefer teas um i'll read the full list it's got juniper berry corn silk uva ursi leaf parsley root horsetail herb golden er goldenrod herb um hy hydrangea root um gravel root marshmallow root orange peel and peppermint leaf now i take um horsetail herb on an almost daily basis it's part of my herbal calcium tea formula but um I, I often take the juniper berry just because it's it's just really good for your your kidney and your gallbladder and um you know so I, I take it just um you know maybe once per year I'll buy like a pound of it and then add it to my herbal calcium tea and, and finish that um yeah and then also orange peel we 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 take orange peel as a family in our superfood patterns it has a natural vitamin c in there as well so i wanted to talk about um a few important aspects of dr schultz's five-day kidney detox now you can read all of the information that he has of course um but just wanted to highlight a few steps or a, a few items now um the thing I want to talk about first about the eight things that you have to do every day during his five day detox. Okay, so first, when you wake up in the morning, you drink eight ounces of distilled or purified water. You should never, ever, ever just drink plain tap water. It's filled with all sorts of tox toxins. Um, step two, you prepare and drink the kidney slash bladder flush drink and we'll talk about how to make it um, later and it's also in his book of course um, the third step is 15 to 20 minutes after drinking the kidney bladder flush drink you drink two cups of the kidney the kbt it's called kbt it's kidney bladder tea um, now you in the tea you put two dropper full of the kb formula in each cup now um personally i don't i don't like to do that you could just put it you know i would actually put it in the water i prefer to put it in the water and drink the tea separately and yeah you know, i like to add honey in my tea so i like my tea to taste nice so, so i would prefer to put the 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 tincture um in the water not the tea or you could just put the tincture in uh, just a smaller uh, cup of water um, but anyways it's up, it's up to you it doesn't really matter and then you take three droppers full of the detox formula so first two of the kb formula um, with the tea or separately and then three droppers full of the detox formula so the detox formula is very has a very strong taste so you i would probably drink it in juice you could do grape juice or apple juice or um, whatever and then an hour later drink um, your superfood juice now you don't have to drink it in juice uh, we, we make our own superfood powder it basically has everything um, that or almost everything that dr. Schultz's superfood um, has sometimes we um, add or take away you know we'll change it up every single time we make it um but the one thing that it does not have is the the brewer's yeast and the reason for the brewer's yeast is because he dr schultz recommends for everyone to be vegan and if you are vegan you you're going to be deficient in b12 most likely and so the brew the brewer's yeast balances that out but because we're not vegan um we don't we don't need the brewer's yeast um and so yeah so we i me and my children we like to take our superfood powder and juice um and all we also put probiotics in it probiotics are super healthy for you 
my husband just likes to drink it straight with water. Okay. Um, okay. So um, you could also add the superfoods in in a smoothie, you know, or something like that, or some freshly squeezed orange juice, or um, you know, whatever you want. So basically, two two tablespoons of the superfood the superfood powder. Um, so the sixth step is the, and I, and when I make my own, when we, when we make our own superfood powder, we get the superfood powders from pacificbotanicals.com. They have a section in their online store. I think it's called superfoods. So you click on that. Um, and we get almost everything except for, we don't put, um, uh, maca root or cacao. There's a few things that we don't put, um, not because we don't like them, those things, but just because we, electro, <laughs> cacao is you know, basically um, real, um, real cocoa powder. So I don't, I don't necessarily want that. I, I eat that anyways. Um, and um, yeah, so, and it's also not in Dr. Schultz's original formula, even though they're, they are things that are good for you. Okay. Now, um, Uh, okay, so do the superfood powder, and then you would, uh, step six, you would take, the, again, the KBT, same dose, and also the, the KB formula, the tincture, um, two more times during the day, and then you repeat that, you repeat the detox formula also, um, four more times during the day, and you basically consume a total of three droppers full five times a day okay of that's for the detox formula and then um you know he has a food and juice program and again he he recommends you know vegan which i think is a good a very good idea for if you have kidney stones to go vegan for a while and even afterwards to eat meat but not very often okay so um he has a recipe also in in his book for a um, two minute kidney bladder flush drink. So basically, in a blender, you would put 16 to 32 ounces of distilled or purified water and the juice of one lemon and one lime. And if you only have lemons or only limes, that's okay. And then a pinch, you know, just do two lemons instead of lemon and, and a lime. If, if you if all you have is lemons or just do two limes and then a pinch of um, cayenne powder um, or five to 20 drops of cayenne tincture. So it's going to be spicy. OK, and then you could add a small amount of maple syrup just to help you put it down. Maple syrup is also, if it's real maple syrup, it's also very good for minerals. It has really good minerals that you that you need, especially the darker kind. Darker maple syrup is, is healthier than the lighter kind because darker means more minerals. And for me, I don't think the taste is worse or anything. It's uh, They're both delicious to me. Actually, I prefer the darker maple syrup. And so then you blend this for 10 to 15 seconds. And I think the best, best blender out there is a Vitamix. It's the most powerful that you can buy the industrial that's you know easy you can find it in in a lot of different places it's easy to buy and then you just drink that so it's really easy it only takes 60 seconds to make this drink so just you know don't don't sip on it because it's spicy just like just get it down as fast as you can that's what the maple syrup is for okay so after you 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 drink that drink then you would um, drink that the tea with a dropper full of the tincture, the, the KB formula. Okay, and then there's um, another recipe in there that he has, which is a kidney stone dissolving formula. Okay, so you would just basically get a one gallon jug. I think it's best to get um, a one gallon glass jar of apple juice if you i i know at sprouts they will sell one gallon jars of apple juice so if you can get a hold of one of those that would be nice you know, if all you have is a plastic jug then so be it but anyways so after it's empty 
um, you know, after you've consumed all of the apple juice or transferred it into different containers, you, um, you would mix 96 ounces of fresh squeezed apple juice and then 10 ounces of fresh squeezed lemon juice, 10 ounces of fresh squeezed lime juice, 10 ounces of organic raw, should be raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar. And so I know that Bragg's has a raw version, and I, I think Trader Joe's has one too. And even the, I think even at Costco, you can get a raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then um, a two ounce bottle of Dr. Schultz's uh, KB formula and two four ounce bags of the KBT. Okay. Ah, interesting, right? So you just basically mix that up and then drink and keep it in the fridge and drink a little bit of that every day and okay and another recipe that I wanted to share that he has in his free book is the potassium broth recipe it's so funny when um he first taught me about this. Basically, you take, so it's it's a quarter of each ingredient, right? So you take, it's 25% potato peels. So you peel the potato. So it should be organic if you're going to do this, organic. You peel the potatoes and you uh, you do whatever to the, to the middle part. Um, it's not part of the recipe. The middle part is not part of the recipe. So if you want to make it, like, let's say you want to make mashed potatoes or something with it, for your family, it's fine. But for your purposes, for your detox purposes, you're just going to get the peels of the organic, should be organic, okay, organic potato. Um, and, you know, when, he, when I learned it from him, he used russet, the kind for baked potatoes. Okay, so 25% potato peels, 25% chopped whole beets and carrots. So let's say you're, let's say like um, a cup of potato peels, a cup of whole beets and carrots, um, um, a cup of white onions and garlic mixed, um, chopped, and um, a cup of dark greens. Okay. So dark greens would be... Um, just vegetables that are green, that are dark green. Um, and then you can you can add hot peppers to taste, and if you want, <laughs> the hot peppers are are, are healing um, as long as you're not taking it too much, but especially for medicinal purposes. But then you add enough distilled water to just cover the vegetables and simmer them on a very low temperature for like um, one to four hours. I would use probably like a, a, a crock pot, a crock pot on high for four hours. Okay, crock pot on high for four hours. And then um, strain, strain it, strain all the ingredients out of it and then only drink the broth. The broth is so healing. And then if you, if you do, if you do the one, I, I'm not sure how much that will make, but you know, make it the first time, and you'll you'll see how much it makes. And then, if but if you make enough, you know, after you understand how much it makes, make enough for two days, and then refrigerate the leftover broth. And then you can just you can take it again. Maybe just add a little bit of hot water to so it's not cold, or warm it up just a little bit. Don't overcook it or anything. Um, but only make sure to only use organic vegetables for all of this, especially if you you're you're consuming this for healing purposes, only organic. You don't need added, you know, pesticides and GMO junk while you're healing. You don't need it. That's okay, probably what contributed to you getting sick in the first place. Okay. Um, all right. So that's about it. Okay, now just a little note about... Um, Dr. Schultz, he's an awesome herbalist, and he has helped to heal so many people. The one thing, the one major thing that I disagree with him on is that he recommends that everyone go on a 100% vegan diet. And the reason why I disagree with that is because I've known a lot of people who have been vegan their whole entire lives and who have developed um, autoimmune diseases 
because of that. So it's a serious issue. I myself have tried to go vegan for a time. And there's also that one um, famous vegan chef who was the girlfriend of the man who uh, made that documentary, Super Size Me, the man who I think he like ate at McDonald's every single day for a month or something like that. And he started basically dying. And his vegan chef girlfriend helped him to recover and, you know, stop, you know, stop dying, basically. So the vegan diet is great for healing and detoxing and cleansing your body. It's great for a lot of um, very serious um, diseases and chronic diseases. And uh, it's great for healing a lot of the, the leading killers that we face in America today. But there are things that we need in meat. And even if we eat it just once in a while, maybe like just once a week, one meal once a week, um, it's, it's really good. It's, it's, it's important, you know, I, so I really don't recommend a vegan diet for, for, um, for an extended amount of time. I think it's great for a short period for cleansing, for detoxing, for recovering from a serious illness or pain or something like that. But, um, I, I don't, I don't think it's safe or healthy or good to, to become a vegan as a religion. Okay. Um, not everyone should be on a vegan diet. Now I've learned from my naturopath that one of, uh, you know, one of my naturopaths that the vegan diet is very unnatural to humans is what I'm saying. And, um, there, they are, they, there are, there are very, there are really no vegan communities that have been 100% pure vegan their whole, you know, for, for, for centuries. There's no such thing. He said that the closest thing that we can see is that there is one, one community in India that is quote unquote vegan, but they do not, you know, they grow in their, they grow their own food their fruit on fruits and vegetables, um, but they don't wash or rinse their fruits and vegetables before they eat it. So what this means is that this community in India is just as vegan as the cow, which means that cows, even cows, which are vegan, right? Cows are plant-based, like they don't go and eat animals, but they still eat animals. They eat it. They eat dead bugs and dead um, bug droppings and just whatever is in the grass. You know, um, they don't wash the grass. Cows don't wash. And no, no vegetarian animal. No, um, what's the word? There's omnivore, carnivore, and herbivore. Right. There's no herbivore on the face of the earth that is really purely vegan. They get a little bit of plant, I mean, excuse me, animal matter, either the feces of the animal or, um, or the, or, and actually both, they, they get both the feces of animals and the animal itself in, in, in some shape or form, because bugs are animals, right? And, and all the herbivores will have a little bit of either the bugs or their feces. So veganism, you know, when, when people tell you to become a 100% pure vegan for life, no, just understand, no, that they're asking you to experiment with your life because there's truly no, there's no true vegan, neither in the human species nor um, in the animal species, okay? At least not that we know have know of that have, have been sustainable for a very long time. And that lady who was the girlfriend and eventually the wife of, of the, of the, um, the man who did the super size me documentary. She, she became a very, she became known as like a, a, a vegan food chef because of that documentary. Um, but, you know, after she gave birth, she, um, she had health issues and the way that she overcame her health issues was to start eating animal products. Okay, and a lot of her followers, she, she, she got a big following because of her, you know, because of that documentary. Um, but and a lot of her followers just started really hating on her, 
um, because of her decision to stop being vegan. But you know what? She she had to for her own health, and it worked. It helped, and I've seen it with others as well. Seen that same thing with other other people as well. Um, I know someone who who was basically vegan her whole life, and when she started eating meat slowly, it's a very small amount. She doesn't eat a lot of meat, but she slowly and surely started eating meat, and her doctor got got her to um, start eating a variety of meat. She that's the only thing that really helped her heal of um, Hashimoto's, the autoimmune disorder, because that's what she was missing. Okay, and me myself also. There's a period of time when I was going vegan, and I had I started getting massive migraines. So that was probably the biggest health challenge that I've ever had in my life. And it's what pushed me to become a naturopathic herbalist is, is that health crisis right there. And it was that crisis came because I was trying to go vegan while living a high stress life. It was a terrible um, recipe for disaster, a terrible combination. Okay, so um, this is kind of a long episode, over half an hour. Um, but I know that this is going to help a lot of people. Whenever I publish a lesson on home remedies for various issues, I always have people that come to me and just thank me, thank me for the information. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that it, that I've helped. And if you would like to look into a holistic life coaching program, I would like to just invite you to um, take a look out, take a look at the website, www.aruka.com. That's A-R-U-K-A-H dot com. And at the Aruka Holistic Life Academy, we, our specialty, our goal, our mission is to empower people to become healers of their home and their community, and be and build profitable online coaching businesses because we need more holistic healers in this world and remember that the creator of heaven and earth is the great physician he can heal anything from sickness and disease to broken hearts and homes become the healer of your home and your community visit our website at www.aruka.com